In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. A friend of mine used to play this game with her children. She would take an apple, cut it open, hand it to her kids, and ask, how many seeds in this apple? And after they had counted them, my friend would take one tiny seed, hold it up and say, now tell me, how many apples are in this seed? And her kids thought about it and decided it was kind of a trick question because the answer could be none, or it could be hundreds, thousands. A seed is a tiny, everyday miracle, a whole world of potential fruitfulness and splendor gathered tightly in a hard little shell that may or may not ever break open and grow. Jesus had a lot to say about seeds. He speaks of sowing and planting, watering and harvesting of seeds that grow and seeds that wither. He spins stories of wheat and weeds and figs and mustard seeds. And Jesus teaches that in order for any seed to grow, it needs to break open and die to what it was so it can become what it is meant to be. Now, human beings often have a role to play in, in scattering and tending and watching. But the mystery is that when it comes to the growth, the growth is given by God alone. And so it is, says Jesus, with the kingdom of God. A miraculous and mystifying activation takes place when the spirit of heaven and the substance of earth kiss each other. Invariably, it prompts a breaking open, an electrifying new beginning, a simultaneous downward rooting, an upward reach that brings about all kinds of good things for all of God's beloved creation, shelter and nourishment, healing and creativity, beauty and delight, health and vibrancy. And to demonstrate this, Jesus directs our attention to small and seemingly inconsequential earthly objects and asks that we see reflected in them the magnificent abundance of the kingdom of God. Things such as seeds, a bit of yeast, five loaves, two fish. And like my friend and her apple, Jesus opens the eyes of our imagination to notice what is and then to see what could be. The ordinary becomes a kind of keyhole through which we glimpse our wildest dreams, a window to the utterly unknowable and thrillingly good, good news. And we are right there with Jesus to this point, but then we hesitate. Does Jesus mean to suggest that God's kingdom really is so near and that it requires so little of us? The kingdom as mustard seed is among the shortest of Jesus' parables, and it seems designed for a quick and easy comprehension by his listeners. Oddly, though, today's gospel lesson ends by saying that while Jesus speaks to the crowds in parables, he explains the deeper meaning of these parables to his disciples in private. And yet, as we'll hear in next Sunday's Gospel, in spite of these exclusive tutorials, even the disciples don't seem to grasp what Jesus is trying so hard to convey. The kingdom of God makes perfect sense to Jesus. It should make sense to us. We want it to. But this vision is just so far from the reality we experience day by day. Our world is competitive, our resources limited. And while, yes, it's true that a tiny seed or a pinch of yeast can grow and produce abundantly, we know that little things can also destroy. A hairline crack can widen and shatter a screen. 
An insinuation can go viral and wreak havoc on public trust. A particle of a virus can infect a body and ravage a whole world. The gospel today meets humanity where we are in a state of acute vulnerability and hope and beckons us to a much, much bigger dream. Today is the last day of a program year at Christ's Church shaped and defined by the pandemic. Our families, our community, and our world balance between vulnerability and hope right now. And the teachings of Jesus ask us to dream big, to recognize that little seeds planted in the dark winter of the past 16 months are now sprouting and growing. To trust, or at least permit the possibility, that God anticipates a record-breaking harvest right here. The evidence is right before your eyes. What was an empty chancel for so long is now chock full of singers finally able to stand together to hear each other as individual intakes of breath are released as living song, blended in harmonies to praise God and inspire God's people to envision the community garden, the fruitful orchard we are becoming as God gives the growth. Growth we can measure and count like seeds in an apple and apples on a tree, as well as growth in the spirit, in relationship and healing and love that is difficult to quantify, yet infinitely more precious in the eye of God. So listen again to the opening prayer appointed for this third Sunday after Pentecost. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church. And this prayer reminds me of our prayer book service of Compline, which we pray together online every Monday night. And in that service, we pray to God, keep me as the apple of your eye, which is an image from Psalm 17, commonly used to mean something or someone especially cherished by the beholder. But the Hebrew expression is translated differently. It means little man of the eye and refers to the reflection of one's own face seen in the round eye of another person. So we pray to be apples of God's eye, reflections of God's image, the image in which we are created. And we pray for the seeds within us to break open and grow in the rich soil of our own hope and vulnerability so that our eyes may reflect the true belovedness of others. Could this be what Jesus means by the kingdom of God? When the whole world becomes the apple of our eye and God's own grace and goodness are reflected right back from earth to heaven? Maybe it can be as simple as that, at least for right now, as we open the eyes of our imagination in this community, waiting and watching for the little seeds scattered and planted in the hard soil of this past year to break open and grow. <laughs>